Are you concerned that you don't get enough protein in your diet? Today, we're gonna discuss the ins and outs of supplementing with protein powder. Hi, I'm Sarah and I'm a nutritional health coach through the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. I'm also certified to teach yoga for osteoporosis. I did my yoga for osteoporosis teacher training with Dr. Lauren Fishman, who spent the last 19 years doing medical research about how yoga can be used to help improve bone health. I recently did an interview with Dr. Fishman on this channel, and if you'd like to check it out, you can do that here. But let's get back to our discussion about protein and protein powder. Have you ever wondered if protein powder is actually healthy? In general, protein powders are considered healthy. It's always preferable to get nutrients directly from food sources, but it isn't always practical or possible. And it is better to supplement from healthy sources than to be deficient. It's important to understand that when we add a protein powder to our diets, it is a form of supplementation. In general, protein powders are made by isolating and purifying protein sources. These sources are dried and dehydrated. In looking at protein in general, our bodies need to have 20 different amino acids. Each of these amino acids is needed in our bodies to build bones and muscles, but also to build the cartilage that's in our bodies and our skin and our hair. Our bodies use amino acids to repair tissues throughout our bodies. We also use proteins to digest our foods and to regulate our hormones. Protein is considered a macronutrient, and every cell in our bodies contains some protein. Out of the 20 amino acids that our bodies need to function, we produce 11 of them naturally ourselves. This means that the other nine of them are that we need to consume the other nine regularly in our diets. Our bodies don't store protein in the same way that they do, say, fat-soluble vitamins. So this means that we need to eat all nine of the essential amino acids every day. When a food contains all nine essential amino acids, it's considered a complete protein. Animal products like meat, fish, eggs, and dairy have all of the essential amino acids in them and are complete proteins. If you're a plant-based eater, you're probably familiar with the concept of pairing different foods such as rice and beans together to form a complete protein. This is because many plant-based foods like beans, nuts, and seeds don't have significant levels of all of the essential amino acids. When these foods are eaten with other plant-based foods that have different amino acids, then our bodies get all of the essential amino acids. Plant-based eaters used to be counseled to eat foods together at the same time that would form a complete protein. Scientists have found that proteins that are not complete can be eaten throughout the day rather than all together in one sitting, and our bodies will still be able to get what they need. It's also helpful for us to eat protein throughout the day rather than all in one go. This helps our bodies to digest the protein more easily and not overload our kidneys. As we age, we lose muscle, making sure that we get enough protein along with doing some form of weight bearing exercise can help to protect us from losing muscle and bone. Taking protein powder can help to spread protein consumption throughout the day in a convenient, easy way. One of my favorite breakfasts is a thick smoothie made from frozen berries and protein powder. And then I like to pour it into a bowl and top it with some homemade granola. So let's talk about what you should look for in a protein powder. Make sure that the protein powder that you choose is third-party tested. This is important because dietary supplements, including protein powders, are not regulated by the Food and Drug Administration. When you choose a protein powder that's third-party tested, then you can ensure that the product that you've purchased contains what it actually says it has in it. The National Sanitation Foundation, or the NSF, is one reputable third-party organization that tests dietary supplements like protein powders to ensure that they are of a high quality. 
it's also important to read the ingredients on protein powders to know what else is in the supplement. Is there added sugar? What about caffeine? Personally, I like to opt for as few ingredients as possible. Since I like to mix my protein powder in with something else that I'm already eating, I'm not particularly concerned about whether or not it has a plain flavor. So how do you select the protein powder that's best for you? At some level, this is going to vary based on your dietary needs, your food allergies, sensitivities, and intolerances. If you consume dairy, then I encourage you to check out a whey-based protein powder. In 2020, there was a scientific review of whey protein supplementation in adults over the age of 65. The review found that whey supplements promote protein synthesis in the elderly, improving muscle performance and aerobic capacity, protecting against sarcopenia and reducing the risk for falls. Whey protein also appears to contribute to improved health, recovery from disease, prevention of cardiovascular and metabolic risks. Whey protein powder is a milk-based protein that has all of the essential amino acids in it. There are two types of whey protein powders, whey isolate and whey concentrate. Both forms of whey have a complete amino acid profile since they're both derived from the same protein sources. There are differences in processing the isolate that result in isolate having a higher protein content and at the same time having a lower amount of both carbohydrates and fat in comparison to whey concentrate. I think it's helpful to understand about the different types of whey-based protein powders so that you can make informed decisions when choosing what to actually buy for yourself. And if you're a plant-based eater, consider buying a protein powder that's pea-based. Pea-based protein powders have all of the essential amino acids, making them a great source for supplementing protein powders. In 2015, there was a scientific study performed that tested muscle increases for people who consumed a pea-based protein powder daily. This, the test split people up into different groups, with one group receiving a placebo. The study was also blind. The group receiving the actual pea-based protein powder found increases in their muscle mass. In order to improve our bone health, we need to have strong muscles that pull on our bones. So it's important for us to build muscle mass. As with everything regarding nutrition, it's important to get enough protein without getting too much protein. If you consume too much protein for an extended period of time, it can be difficult on your kidneys. If you have kidney-related issues, be extra diligent in making sure that you don't consume too much protein to protect your body from being overloaded. Protein is important for building strong, healthy bones and muscles, and choosing a high-quality protein powder to supplement your daily protein intake may be beneficial if you're struggling to get enough protein on a regular basis. I hope that you found this information about what to look for in a protein powder and about the different types of protein powders helpful for you. If you found this information helpful, please share it with someone that you know and love. And as always, the studies and references that I used to prepare this discussion are in the description, so please check them out. And I look forward to talking with you soon.